Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to American Falls by a boy we call Lancey. Hope you're all having a good week. I know my week has been alright so far. Nothing too dramatic to speak of. I'm sure it's still early enough to where something will come along to irritate <laughs> to irritate me. <laughs> you know, I'm not so sure about this snow thing. I was thinking about this last night. Yeah, I'm I'm missing the edge. I, I know. I know. I, I, the snow thing was freaking me out, making me sick, freaking me out. Um, I don't know why. I'm not usually all that sensitive to that kind of thing. I tend to not get car sick. I don't get seasick. Um, I don't get air sick. I can be on a plane all day, be in a car in a back seat. I can even read in a car. Things like that. But man, that snow was just getting to me last night. Uh, last night's episode and last night in the game as well. But we are working on cultivating. Yeah, surprise, surprise. I know. But uh, I promise we won't. This is not going to be a cultivating only series. But we are taking advantage of our owned equipment. I was thinking about this. Uh, might not hurt. I'm going to go ahead and just split this field. It might not hurt. I was thinking about what to buy next and, you know, a cedar or what, but I was thinking, you know, Brad, might be a good idea to maybe buy a field. Maybe we should think about getting, well, we need to get our loan paid off because that's probably a number one priority, but a field, even if it's a smaller field, then we're, then we're landowners. Now we're going to be taken seriously, you know? People in American Falls will say, hey, this guy actually might be here to stay for a while. So, yeah, maybe that's what we need to do. Anyways, ideas just rolling around in my little brain. But uh, what a beautiful December. The snow stopped, which is kind of nice. I, um, I don't usually let the snow bother me during the daylight, but that night snow driving business is for the birds. So I was just on uh, Discord chatting with my buddies, Gen X and TBG. That's right. Shocker. I was on Discord. I got a text from my son and he's like, hey, dad, um, you might want to jump on Discord when you get a chance. It looks like uh, you're getting you're getting spammed by your uh, <laughs> by your uh, <laughs> subscribers. And I'm like, oh, really? Of course I am. But uh, we had a good chat. We had a good chat. I need to really work on getting um, getting in Discord more, and I will. I promise. It's crazy. I know this shows my age and whatnot, but I honestly remember the days when you either had a phone call or you had to go to somebody's house, right, to chat. If you wanted to talk to somebody, that's how you did it. You went to their house. You called them on the phone. Or maybe you saw them at a wedding or a funeral <laughs> or church or a school function or whatever it might be. But nowadays, man, I've got family saying you need to get on Messenger more, like Facebook Messenger. You need to get on um, Facebook in general more. You need to get on Discord. You need to get on regular. Then you've got regular messaging on your phone. Then you've got, uh, what else is there? X, formerly known as Twitch. You've got Instagram. My nieces and nephews are on Instagram. Ay, yay, yay. It's like pick one, people. I, I give. I'll give you one, man. You know what I'm saying? I told my family I'm gonna give you one, maybe two tops, but that's it. We gotta put the kibosh on this. This is crazy. Then I've got like my kids going. I don't know. They're trying out some other deal, and it's like, no. I'm not adding a sixth or seventh line of communication. It's just not going to happen. I can't do it. I can't do it. Then somehow or other, and I thought I was smarter than this, but apparently not. I got all of a sudden my Apple email address got latched onto by some spam stinking 
nonsense. So now I'm getting all of these emails that I never used to get on my... My Apple email address used to be pure. It used to be just beautiful. Like, if I got an email on my through my Apple email address, I knew it was from somebody I knew or something I, I knew was coming. But it was nice and pure. Not anymore. And I think what happened... I think what happened is... You know how you get those, you know how you have games on iOS, you know, and these simple games you play on iOS on your phone or your tablet. I'm pretty sure I made the mistake of logging into one of these games using my Apple account. I'm pretty sure that's what did it in. So one of these stupid games that I probably deleted after five minutes of playing, now they have my email address and now I'm getting spam like there's no tomorrow uh, you know just a little fun fact you probably all do this already but get yourself a, a throwaway gmail account and use you know call it whatever you want call it I hate spam at gmail.com or whatever you want to call it and use that for everything you sign up for, or things you have to sign up for that you don't want to sign up for, but you have to, which is another irritation altogether. And um, and use that. Yahoo became my go-to junk mail email address. I've I've had this um, SBC Global email address forever. I mean, before. <laughs> before uh, what's his face invented the internet I think I had SBC Global What what is his name what was his name the dude that invented the internet <laughs> I can't remember his name I can picture his face that's another face I want to punch you know how there's just some faces you want to punch yeah man I want to punch him anyways hard to punch somebody I can't remember their name it's not Dan Quayle that's another dude I'd like to punch do you remember Dan Quayle? Wow, I don't know where that came from. Anyways, I'm going down a, a side road I probably shouldn't go down. But SBC Global. Do any of you even remember what that... That was like... I'm trying to remember why I had that. I must have had a... I think it was from my days of having DSL. You remember DSL? I don't even know if DSL still exists. I think that's what it's called, right? Where you get internet through your phone line. And then somebody would pick up the phone to make a call. And they couldn't because you were on the internet. And then it interrupted your internet. And so you got disconnected anyways. Then we thought we were in the big leagues when you could get a splitter. So you could stay on the internet using your phone line. But somebody could still make a call. And I thought that was pretty epic. It's actually quite amazing at the speeds you can get through a phone line, through copper. It's pretty unbelievable, the speeds that they can actually get through regular phone line copper. Um, I mean, huge, huge speeds, but... Uh, I think I was stuck at maybe one and a half or two meg down and probably, I don't know, 50k up or something crazy. The days of DSL. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. Then I upgraded to, I guess, eventually to just cable and pretty much have been cable internet all along. Tin Man, I know what you're thinking right now, buddy. I feel for you, man. I really do. I know your challenges. You've told me <clears throat> about your internet challenges, and I feel for you, man. I, I think I think I would... You know, if I never had fast internet, it wouldn't bother me as much. But now that I've had fast internet, if I had to go back to DSL or to, man, to a modem, oh my gosh... The days of modems. I guess I had a modem before I had DSL. Yeah, for sure. 56K 
modem. 56k. Think about that. But then we didn't have stuff to stream like we have today. So 56k was okay. Because you were just going to bulletin boards. Do any of you remember bulletin boards? We were just doing bulletin board services or maybe news groups. There's one for the old folks. News groups. Usenet. I was just actually talking to somebody the other day about Usenet. They were actually asking me about getting Usenet and getting an account. And it just brought back a flood of memories. That was where I originally became... That's where I used to get all my free stuff. And we won't get into that a whole lot. But let's just say Usenet was the bomb. The bomb diggity. Before Torrents... Before Pirate Bay and all that other nonsense, man, Usenet. And I used a and um, I used a client called Forte Agent. Some of you might be old enough or maybe remember that. Forte Free Agent I used actually for a long time, and then I started. Then the then um, my ISP ISPs started blocking a lot of news groups. If you don't know what a news group is, it's basically, it's just a, it's a text-based chat hangout place with th thousands of topics, thousands of topics. So you would find like alt.net.games.pc um, and that's where you would go to, you know, look for games. <laughs> stuff like that but there was a subject for everything and I actually miss it because it was so simple and so easy and people oh it was just amazing and this Forte agent you would launch that instead of using a web browser because it was designed specifically for news groups so you could subscribe to different news groups everything was free you didn't pay anything to get into any, any of these groups and once you were, you just, they, subscribing was like bookmarking a website. And then once you found these groups, you could just go to town, you know. And Forte also made it easy because when people would post things in these news groups, they would be in multi, uh, multiple parts. And you'd have to basically stitch all these parts together in order to get a final file. Whether it be a zip file or an executable, whatever it might be. And Forte Agent, this client, would do all that for you. It made news groups simplistic and wonderful. It's still out there. If you if you go out to Google and do a little search on Forte Agent, they still offer it. Um, eventually, ISPs started blocking these news these news groups because they knew that that was where people were pirating uh, people were pirating software and, and all that stuff. And so they started blocking them. So eventually, I ended up having to actually pay for a news group service. Um, so I was paying for my ISP, for my internet service, plus I was paying for... Um, and I think I got my news group service through Forte. And you would log into this service and they had... They gave you free roam of all the news groups that were out there. Like I said, there were there were thousands of them, thousands of them. Some of them, you know, you you could easily find just by searching. Some of them you had to kind of be in the know or take a lot of time to find. Depends on how they were named. What a brilliant time of the internet, though. That was when the internet was even more fun than it is today. But uh, that's when games were not 80 gig, 90 gig, 120 gig. That's unbelievable to me how big games are these days. Massive games. These were when games were could fit on a floppy disk. <laughs> 1.44 meg or double-sided double density. There you go. Yeah, I'm showing my age. Getting a little geek on here. 
but um, I actually, uh, after this guy was asking me about news groups, I tell you, I kind of got a little itch for the news group scene again, and I might, I might actually go check it out. I might go check it out again. I'm sure they're not anywhere near what they used to be. You know, nothing is, but it might be kind of fun to go to go see what's available out there on the news groups. There's some... Uh, like anything, there's some pretty sketchy stuff out there, too, that you kind of want to be careful about. It didn't used to be so bad, you know, I mean, you weren't so worried about viruses and stuff, and, and things were just a little more relaxed than they are today, but I would be much more careful today about what I was grabbing from a, a news group. I'd be curious if bulletin board services are still available. I kind of doubt it, but bulletin board services used to be um, kind of entertaining. Find the right subject, find the right group. It was kind of interesting. We used to have a store where I lived in Minnesota. It was a used software store. And um, I remember going in there and they had it. <laughs> they must have either been asked so many times about the legality of it. Or they just flat out did it for their own sake. But they had this poster uh, when you walked in that basically gave the, um, the, the law suit or the whatever it was that referenced the legality of being able to buy and sell used software. It, now that I think about it, it was probably for their own, you know, CYA. Because the fact is, I'm quite certain, oh, I'm gonna hit a tree. Nope, I didn't. The fact is, 99% of the people that shop there, I would guess, made a copy of that software before they, <laughs> before they uh, brought it in to sell. That, that would be my guess, at least. So legally, you were... I don't know if things have changed now or not. I guess, in a way, it doesn't matter because nobody buys... Nobody buys physical copies of software anymore, it seems like, you know. But back in the day, that was, that was the way you did it. And uh, so you'd go into this used software joint and you could bring in anything, you know. It's like a used records or anything else. You would just... They'd give you a price and you'd sell your software and they'd turn around and sell it to make money and you could get some decent deals on on used software. And I'm, I'm guessing, like I said, 99% of what I bought there was probably still being run on somebody else's PC or multiple PCs. I remember I bought uh, PowerPoint not PowerPoint. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, shoot. Now I'm going to forget. See, this is what happens. Not PowerPoint. So what was the alternative to Office? There was some big alternative to Office. And it was expensive. Five, six hundred bucks back in the day. You'd see Adobe software there too once in a while. Um, use that you know you were definitely not the only person running. Then software manufacturers got smarter and started doing activation keys and you know the more they did anti-piracy though the harder it became to be a legitimate software owner and I think that's always been the fine line for software for uh, for these publishing houses is you you have to protect your your software which I get but if you make it so difficult you make it so difficult that people who buy it legitimately have a hard time activating it. You know, Adobe is still a little bit classic for that. You know, you buy something, you just want to get home and use it, and they make it so freaking difficult for you to activate it. We still have software uh, where I work that requires an external key. You know, like uh, now it's a now it's a flash drive. It used to be. Um, a serial port, if you remember what a serial port is, used to be a serial port dongle. And you would plug this dongle in, 
to your PC and that was your activation key. If it wasn't plugged in, you weren't using the software. Those things were a freaking nightmare. They could they either worked right off the bat perfectly well or they were just a nightmare. But we still have some software at work that requires a physical key to be plugged into the computer in order for the software to work. Like I said, you know, I get it, you know, two, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar software. You don't want just floating around for freebies, but man, do they make it hard on legitimate owners sometimes too. So I was talking to TBG and Gen X on the Discord and uh, kind of mentioned to them that uh, it's been kind of a crazy week for me at work a little bit. My boss retired um, at the beginning of the year. Called it good. Uh, let's just say we all celebrated <laughs> more than he did. <laughs> uh, anyways, this guy, man. This guy. Unbelievable. Some people... I'm just going to say this, man. You know, some people shouldn't be managers. And some people are promoted because here's the thing that I've learned. And, I've, and, I've, and I'm old enough to have been in this corporate crapola world for a long time. You get people that are really good at their jobs. So what do you do? You know, you advance them. And a lot of times the next advancement is as a manager's role. But no thought goes into the fact of whether or not they're going to be a good manager. But that's the next step they can take, is become a manager. I have seen that backfire so many times I can't even begin to count. How about this for an idea? If you're really good at your job, how about letting that person continue with their job that they're really good at and pay them, pay them more. Pay them so they know they're, they're valued. But don't just throw them into a managerial role because you have no pl nothing else to do for them and you don't want to pay them just for that job. So we got to get more out of them. If we're going to pay them more, you know, they've dedicated their lives to this company. So instead of just paying them more, let's, uh, you know, let's advance them up to management <clears throat> where he can be another crappy manager. Because guess what? Should have never been a manager in the first place. Well, that's what this story's all about. And this guy, this guy. Took no time to do any kind of knowledge transfer. Took no time to write any kind of uh, letters, um, you know, like... Um, um, basically, what do they call the, uh, uh, when you, when you get a letter for rec uh, recommendations, he did nothing, worked with this guy forever and, and just nothing, just nothing. And it, it surprised some people. I wasn't surprised by it because that's basically his legacy, but, uh, things have been a little bit crazy at work. And of course, they're taking their time replacing them because to be fair nobody really notices that he's gone so why hurry you know but those little things that you got to do that at least he was good for are now open for everybody else to fill in so yours truly has a few more things to do but uh yeah, so it's been a little bit crazy since he left. And this week, we just have had a few other things pile on. But that's not what you came here for, to listen to me cry about work woes. But uh, I'm sure if you guys have been in the workforce long enough, you know exactly what I'm talking about. About these promotions that happen that are just like, wow. And sometimes it's not always the person's fault, you know, it's, it's the company, you know, and then do they offer management training and some people quite frankly, and it's fine. 
Some people just aren't meant to be managers. That's fine. You know? Maybe it's not your personality. Maybe it's not your strong suit. You know? Nothing wrong with that. But these poor people are thrown into these positions because these companies don't just simply say, you know what? You're good at your job. Why don't we just pay you more? Keep you at what you're doing because you're really valued. Now, if the person wants to move on, you know, more power to them. But a lot of times it's, 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 they, it's either that or just, you know, don't go up the corporate ladder. I have no interest in going up the corporate ladder anymore. I used to. I went up the corporate ladder. I did my time. Now I just want to be able to go to work, put my time in, and come home and not really have to think about it. I just have no interest in dealing with the politics and um, the after hours, you know, stuff and everything else. Pay me my eight. I'll call it a day. I have no idea why I went down that road, but... Oh, probably because I was talking about the Discord chat. So, yeah, we were talking a little bit on Discord about that and stuff and some other things. But it was kind of fun. I, I I think I'm... I need to just start getting a little bit more active on Discord. I, I figure... Uh, I don't want to, you know... I just... I'm very conscious of the fact when people leave comments on my videos... Um, I don't like to not respond. It, I'm very conscious of that because I figure if somebody takes the time to write something to me, they deserve a response. Even if it's not a written response, they deserve to know that I've read it. So maybe a thumbs up, you know, that kind of thing. And if you get a thumbs up and a heart for me, I've read your comment. I feel like that's the least I can do, is at least read the comment, you know? And I think some channels get so big where that's not necessarily always doable, and I kind of get that. Are we done? We're done. I'm yapping. How long have we been done? How long have you guys been yelling at me saying, hey, Brad, you're stinking done? <laughs> I don't know how long that's been done. Oh, uh, I love being able to complete and collect. I love that. Look how good of a job we did on this field. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, well, we've got two more fields that we need to do. We've got 25 and 46. Let's take a quick peek ski at the map. We're down here. We need to drive over. It looks like 25 is our next victim. So let's head over that way. So, um, anything else going on your neck of the woods? Everybody's busy. Everybody's got stuff going on. It's a weird, oh, Brad, lift that puppy. It's a weird time of the year because uh, we're all, like, done with the holidays and kind of taking a breath from, from that. Valentine's Day. When is Valentine's Day? Uh-oh. When is Valentine's Day? Is that coming up? Like, where am I? Where's my little arrow? Oh, there's my little arrow. So I am going the right way. Okay, good. Valentine's Day has got to be... Is it the 14th? Wait, is, is Valentine's Day tomorrow? Hey, Siri, when is Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Oh, wait. You guys didn't hear that. Hey, Siri, when's Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Wow. The only thing she left off is, you idiot. I wish Siri was a little more spunky that way. I think it'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Valentine's Day is tomorrow, Brad, you idiot. Um, if you haven't yet bought anything for your Valentine's Day... Uh, person, you're probably SOL. Siri needs to have a more of an attitude, but you know what? These days, if Siri copped an attitude, people would get all offended. Oh no, Siri's copped an attitude. 
We don't want to offend people. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. 25. Where are you, 25? Are you right there? Are you 25? Is there a fence? No, there's not a fence. Thank goodness for that. I think this is 25. Oh, we are so on 25. That's freaking awesome. You know what? Let's uh, let's at least start this bad boy. Take down that lamp post. Let's at least get this thing started. Notice no GPS on that last field. Are you all proud of me? I'm actually starting to kind of just get used to it. No GPS. No GPS. No GPS, Brad. I do like cultivating. Not going to lie. It is something that I actually do enjoy. I find it somewhat satisfying. Let's see if we can just... Looks like if we just line up a little bit right here, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Watch the rows. But yeah, I, I enjoy cultivating. I find it relaxing, you know? It's a relaxing thing to do. We should take a... Oh, I wanted to show y'all something. Uno momento. Found this little mod, this little beauty, this little gem out on... Um, uh, yeah, out on King Mods. This little John Deere two-cylinder jobber. This thing is actually pretty well detailed. It's not too bad. The sound of the engine is very good. I don't know that he's quite captured or they have quite captured the old Johnny Popper sound, you know, just right, but it's still got a really good engine tone to it. You can get her in uh, 40, what is it, 40, 48, 47, and 58. You can kind of see how the design changes a little bit there on, she, on her. You have the wheel set up. So basically with the wheels, it's just the wheel spread. Very nice. And by the way, it is clean as a whistle in the log. That red arrow right there is not part of the tractor. That arrow right there is part of the map. Um... Fortunately, not a game ending kind of error. Old exhaust, new exhaust. Pre filter, no pre filter. Design, no fenders, fenders. Then you got attachers on the front here, got none. Starter, you get a little different weight sizes right there. I don't see the front end going down. Oh, wait. Actually, maybe it is a little bit. Yeah, it might be. Uh, GPS, <laughs> and of course the color of your seat. She's a beaut. You should check it out. It's out on King Mods. You might like it. It's cheap too, but she's slow and not a lot of horsepower, but boy, this would have been nice on the old family farm, wouldn't it? So yeah, kind of a cool little mod. Pretty small too. I think it's only like 19, 20 megs, so it's not one of those... Not one of those tractors you find that are like 150 megabytes or like, uh, why is this 150 meg for one tractor? The word optimize ever come across, <laughs> ever come across your mind? <laughs> I know I'm being, I'm being a jerk. Boy, dude, man, TBG, I'm glad you told me about this contract HUD. It's taken me a little bit to get used to it being there. Like, not so much that it's in the way or anything, but just getting out of the habit of going to the PDA. Or going, you know, doing this number all the time. Boy, though, it's that's so handy. And it's kind of funny, too. It's kind of cool because I noticed the other day when I started the game up and we were like uh, 95, 96% done with one of the fields. When you started the you started the map, you actually could see it counting up like it was. Um, 
it was figuring out where you were and how much you of it was calcu it was doing its calculations. I don't know, I like that kind of stuff. I think it's kind of funny. Already 12:30. I was thinking we would easily have enough time to rack up maybe at least one or two more or maybe one of the big boys. There's a $12,000 one out there, I think, and a I think there's a couple of $12,000 cultivating jobs out there. Train. Is that train longer than the norm? It seems like Lancey might have uh, put a little bit longer train on this map. I don't remember that train being so long on the standards maps. I'll be happy if we can just get done with these two that are that are remaining. No penalties. Have a nice clean December without me costing us more money than we make. That's always a good thing. Another driver update came out today for my for my old RTX card. That's lovely. I think I might bypass this one. Boy, I've been getting into ATS. It's getting dangerous. I've really been... Had a hankering for ATS lately. I think I mentioned I uh, actually purchased a uh, cab over mod that I had my eye on for a while and uh, didn't we um oh, oh man I was about ready I was about ready to freak out I thought how did I end up on the wrong field <laughs> okay didn't <laughs> Oh boy, that would have sucked. I honestly thought I I in, I was on the wrong field. I, I'm looking down, going, um, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember leaving our field. So yeah, ATS boy, it's funny. I again, it's one of those games that I used to play so much, and. I stopped playing it and hadn't picked it up in I think according to Steam it had been like eight months, eight, nine months since the last time I even started it up. And I know that it's been longer than that since I actually played it on the regular. It's been at least a year. And um yeah, I fired that thing up and I was checking out all the changes that have taken place since then. And I mean, the last time I played that game, I would say pretty hardcore. Um, there was no voice. There was no voice navigation. So that's even kind of new for me. I think voice navigation, was that like around 1.4 or something like that I don't know I get lost with the with all the update numbers and what they change but uh, the game looks better than it did before um, come to think of it I don't think I actually ever played American truck or Euro truck on my current PC hardware so that obviously has made a big difference as well. I think when I was playing ATS on the regular, I was still running my old GTX 1080. NVIDIA GTX 1080. Which um, I have handed down to, to, my, to one of my kids. That thing is still going strong rock solid card he still gets a lot of good use out of it he's able to play all the games he wants to play now some of them are not 
set to ultra, you know, kind of thing. But he's at least able to to game on most game, every game. I, he hasn't told me there's anything that hasn't it hasn't met requirements for. I think he's running. I upgraded his uh, motherboard and CPU. Um, so he's running a, uh, an AMD uh, Ryzen 7. I think he's running a Ryzen 7 something. I forget what it is. 5900X maybe. But I know he's on DDR4, which we wanted to do and stuff like that. And he's doing pretty good. My other son, we need to start working on some more upgrades for him. Unfortunately, when you're the youngest and the hand-me-down stuff happens, sometimes being the youngest is just not the place to be. But... Um, I'm going to try and take care of him this year. Hopefully after tax season. We can invest some more money. I try to, uh, every tax season, I try to invest a little money in either my computer. Which then whatever I exchange out usually gets hand me down, handed down to the kids. Or I try to invest a little money in their computers to try and keep them up enough to where they can play the games they, they like to play. I mean, let's face it. They play a lot more than I do. So realistically, <laughs> they probably need a better computer than I do, but they're also, my, my youngest is, is an Xbox. He's got a Series X, so he's doing well on the console side. He's got he's got the latest and greatest there, but uh, but yeah, it's hard to keep up with this stuff, and it's expensive. I shouldn't even say it's hard to keep up because that's not really true. It's expensive to keep up, is what it is. It's crazy expensive. I was looking at the new RTX 40 series, the 4000 series cards. Come on, really? I'm not ready to invest 15. $1,500 to $2,000 in a graphics card? Ay, ay, ay. I've had cars that are much cheaper than that. <laughs> oh, man. I think if I was, but I can, I can honestly say, if I was financially independent, that's where I would that's that's one thing I would definitely be blowing money on computer hardware I it's just something I enjoy and I would you know if money wasn't an issue or wasn't a concern oh yeah I'd be one of those early adopters that Apple Vision Pro have you guys looked at that 3500 bucks. I want to um, congratulate anybody that owns one. <laughs> Good for you. But uh, I want to go try it out. I guess you can um, I guess you can um, schedule a demo. And I happen to live less than, well, basically 5 minutes from an Apple store. Am I getting some wheel slip? Maybe not. It's kind of looked like it. I live about five minutes from an Apple store, so it's pretty convenient to be able to just go and... I want to try it out, though. My curiosity is piqued. Um, I've got a buddy that's got the um, uh, the Steam VR. I always forget what it's called, but you all know what I'm talking about. He's got the full setup, the thousand-plus dollar full gimmick. But we were talking about VR for American Truck Sim. And I am, oh boy, I am so tempted to just get the headset. I guess just, that's all I'd really need. I am so tempted. Everybody that I've talked to, I've read about, say that VR and American Truck Sim is the bomb. But I've also heard, this This is what concerns me, is the, um, the nauseousness. Because I guess a lot of people do struggle from nausea because you know your body's expecting to feel certain things 
Like when you come to a stop. My dad used to do this all the time. Oh my gosh. It was so annoying. He's one of these dudes that when you came to a stop sign or a stoplight, he was one of these soft stoppers, right? So you wouldn't feel the car actually stop. You'd see the car. You could look outside and know that you're stopped, but you wouldn't feel that that final little uh that told you the car was stopped. And when I was a kid, <laughs> my brother and my oldest sister would get so mad because they were puking in the back seat of the uh, family truckster, the old Vista Cruiser. And they would be like, Dad, hit the brake. Like, please let us... Like, they would actually ask him to, to roll forward a little bit and, like, stop the car. And it would fix them. It would, it would like, instantly make them feel better. But, man, was he so into that, man. You know, you roll up to a stop sign, and it was just so smooth and soft. You never got that satisfaction of stopping. And I've heard that's part of what's going on here with this VR stuff is... You're turning corners, you're stopping, you're starting, and your brain and your body are expecting, you know, that certain feel because VR is so good these days. So I guess if I went with VR for American Truck Sim, I would also have to spend the, I don't know, maybe like five grand to get the motion seats, to get those uh, gaming rigs. That are all uh, motion. Oh man, have you seen those? I watch this dude's channel. He doesn't post very often. He's a review channel for gaming hardware. Not graphics cards and things, but for actual physical gaming hardware. Wheels and stuff like this. Pretty popular guy on YouTube. When he posts, he seems like he gets a lot of views. And... Um, He's got a nice setup. The whole full racing seat with, you know, where you sit in it. You can actually, it actually tilts and does all the whole, the whole business. I would imagine that that would help with, uh, with the nauseousness that people get with VR. My buddy says um, that it does get better over time, I guess. He said that he also kind of, had some issues with that, but he said the more that he used VR, the more uh, comfortable he got. He said it helped a lot to have a fan blowing on him, to have like air movement, to kind of keep you cool because, you know, when he was feeling sick, it helped to have the fan blowing on him. Um, but yeah, he said that's definitely something some people have worse than others. Then I thought, well, don't they make... They make motion sickness medicine. Maybe that's, you know, something you could think about doing. But I think motion sickness... Medicine has its own drawbacks with, like, making you... I think it generally can make you tired and stuff like that. I don't know. Pop a pill, baby. Pop a pill. All right, everyone. I got to let you go. We are... 47%. That's lovely. We'll probably get this field knocked out. And um, I'll see you tomorrow back here on American Falls. Hopefully my internet is fine. Uh, we had an internet outage this morning, which sucked. But fortunately, I had, and had to go to work anyways. So I'll tell you, life is, life is not the same without internet. So they had a quote-unquote scheduled outage. They say they're, they were performing upgrades. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll see. But uh, hopefully it's uh, solid and good to go. But uh, what is is it Tuesday night? Steam has an outage every Tuesday. I always forget about that. And I get into Steam and it, you can't connect. And then I remember, oh, yeah. Every Tuesday, I think it's around 6 p.m. Eastern, Steam has an outage for some kind of uh, 
something. I don't know what they do during this outage. It usually doesn't last very long. It's usually less than a half an hour. But um, I always forget that happens. You all take care of yourselves. Make sure you take care of each other. Thanks again for being awesome. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll be back doing our thing tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Have a good, have a great day. See ya. Bye for now.